when the first time you hear the word firewall, this is something that might come into your mind. A hacker actually trying to infiltrate your network and you blocking it by writing some rules in a service called a firewall. And I want you to keep that thing in your mind that is you write some rules that allow or block someone or something or an IP or a port to be accessible from the outside world. And that's how you keep your network secure. Or it could be one of the ways you keep it secure. But what exactly is a firewall? So let's understand that. So let's imagine a real world scenario. Here is your office space that we work. And these are the four members who have some work at the office. John, David, Amanda are the employees of the office. And worker A that you see here is here to fix the plumbing in the cafeteria. Among these four people, who do you think should have access to the development business unit of the office? Obviously, three members who have the access and they are John, David and Amanda. But to make the decision, we have a security system in place that allows only the employees to enter the development business unit. So we have three people who have the access and one who does not. When they reach the office, this is what their access looks like. So as you can clearly see, three members, John, David and Amanda have the access and they are allowed to the business unit of development and worker A is restricted. Now it's time to leave the office. So everyone has to leave to their respective homes. But if you have noticed, the office security will not allow you to take anything out of the office other than your laptop and personal items. And those things that the office person or the security personnel will not let you take out are the office bonded warehouse items. Here as well, we have a security system which blocks users from going out if they carry any bonded items. Okay, so bonded items are like chair, tables and other office items. So don't think about that. But you have to remember that when you're stepping out of the office, the security system does not allow you to move out if you carry if you carry with yourself any office bonded warehouse item. Now keep these two scenarios in mind. One, where we are allowing or restricting people coming inside the office. And the second one is where we restrict or allow people outside of the office based on certain conditions. And the first one is called the inbound rule, which restricts the access for people coming inside the office. And the second one is what we call as an outbound rule, which restricts or allows access to people going outside the office. Remember these two terms very carefully, inbound and outbound, and the way the security restricted access for them. Those are rightly called the rules or access rules. So the three things that you need to remember here are inbound rules. The second one is outbound rules. And the third thing is access rules. Okay, let's come back to the networking world. Here you see two things. One is your local area network where you have your devices or servers that you host applications with or you are working with. And we have the wide area network or what you call your internet space from which the requests are being sent and propagated across the globe. The most important thing for you to remember is that security to your network is imperative. And you can secure it enough by restricting access to people whom you think are good enough to access your resources. And a firewall can help you do that. So I'll ask you once again, what is a firewall? So a firewall could be a software that is installed on your machine, or it could be hardware that sits in between the device or network that you are a part of and the actual uplink or the internet, which carefully analyzes the traffic and allows or restricts the flow of traffic to your device or devices with the help of a predefined configuration rule that is written to the firewall. So I'll tell you this once again, a firewall could be a software that is installed on your machine or it could be a hardware that sits in between the device or network that you are a part of and the actual uplink or the internet which carefully analyzes the traffic and allows or restricts the flow of traffic to your device or devices with the help of predefined configuration rule that 
are written to the firewall like what we saw before let's suppose your device ip is 32.68.11.23 and the port is 22 we can write a rule that allows a different ip 40.12.22.12 to access this ip address with a particular port i am not sure how many of you have worked with ip tables but if you have you know what i am talking about here but we are not going to discuss in depth on how to configure firewalls but you need to understand the basics before moving forward and not everyone who is on the internet is good there are people who are bad and they want to access your content which is unethical they could be the hackers or spammers or those can be bots who just repeatedly try and manipulate or access the data which is very bad for your network so with a firewall you can allow requests that you feel are good and valid and that will help you block other unwanted people from accessing your network and you can do that by configuring predefined rules in your firewall itself remember this point very carefully so with a firewall you can allow requests that you feel are good and valid and that will help you block other unwanted people from accessing your network and you can do that by configuring predefined rules in firewall itself so you can do that by configuring predefined rule sets in your firewall itself but that's what makes the firewall special as i already told you before there could be both good and bad requests let's see what happens when a firewall handles the traffic so if you see here the bad requests basically just bounce off from the firewall and the good ones are able to reach the destination that is your network but how does a firewall determine if a request is from a good or bad source just before understanding how that exactly works let's see a few types of firewalls so the first one is host based firewall the simple meaning of host with respect to network is that a host is a machine or a device that is a part of the network and based actually means that the firewall resides within the host itself so how it can reside inside a host obviously it will be installed on the host itself and you can manage the firewall settings within the host itself and it will protect the host and its network so that it doesn't get affected by the unwanted traffic or virus attacks or infiltration so in the definition the host based firewall is software that runs on the host machine and protects it from the outside attack but the thing is that these firewall softwares are very compact and they are for individual devices if you see here the firewalls bounce off the bad requests and allow the good ones which are as per the required rules written on the firewall so now let's see another firewall that is a bit more robust yes let's talk about network based firewall so a network based firewall or network firewall rightly controls the traffic coming in and going out of the network but the main difference is that it is a dedicated piece of device or system that can help you track monitor and log the traffic that flows in and out of the network so it's a dedicated server that sits between your network and the outside world and as we see here the devices are connected to the network firewall so the rules that are present on the network firewall precedes the security protocols of the device but having said that you can also install an individual host based firewall on your device to have granular controls so just to reiterate on this once again if you see the firewall just sits in between the network that you have and the outside world and the bad request just bounce off from the firewall itself but if suppose you want to have granular controls you can also install a host based firewall on your device itself now that the most popular ones are out let's talk about a few more so the first one that we have here is network segmentation firewall so when you think of a network segmentation so the first thing that you want to imagine is a bigger network and when we use this word segmentation it means that we are going to divide this bigger network into smaller segments or maybe breaking it down to the individual device host as well so in order to do this we can make use of a hardware firewall which helps you segment the network on the host itself without having to touch the actual network so these are called network segmentation firewall they actually help you break down a bigger network into smaller networks or it can break down to a individual host also so that you don't have to really touch the network but you can 
configure rules on the firewall that interpret that this network has been segmented into a separate part. And that is why they are called as network segmentation firewall. The second one is database firewall. So no points for guessing a database firewall is a type of web application firewall that actually helps you monitor databases so that you can identify and protect your databases against database specific attacks. So next one is cloud based firewall. Okay, this is very simple to remember. So the cloud based firewall is a firewall that's installed or hosted on the cloud itself. And don't ask me what does installing on cloud means. I now think that everyone will be aware of compute as a service or just like we have like compute as a service, we here have firewall as a service, but these are installed on third party providers. And the objective is very simple. They help us block malicious traffic and prevent unauthorized access to the private networks. I'm not sure, but if your organization uses Zscaler, uh, that's one of the popular cloud firewalls. Uh, and last but not the least, the next gen firewall, according to Wikipedia, what we have here is a next gen firewall is a part of the third generation of firewall technology, combining a traditional firewall with other network device filtering functions, such as an application firewall using inline deep packet inspection and intrusion prevention system. So network filtering is like controlling access to the network by analyzing the incoming and outgoing packets based on the IP address of the source and the destination. So this is a combination of multiple features in one firewall. That is why it is called as a next gen firewall. I'm not going deep into all of these because these are not that much required for our session, but I just wanted to share these details with you so that you get to know more than what exactly is being taught outside. And these are some of the best known firewalls for Windows and Linux. The first one, obviously, we have the Windows Firewall Control. Second one is Syscate Personal Firewall. We have Zone Alarm. We have Komodo Firewall. And we also have a very popular one that we have. It's like uh, recently they have launched a new version for this one as well. That is Glasswire. And if you like any firewalls in particular, please put them in the comment section below. When we think of the basic definition of firewall, we know that a firewall is a network security system that monitors and controls the incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. So what are those rules? So let's take access control list as the primary set of rules. So as we already know that the firewall blocks things that you don't want and allows only the ones that you add as a part of the traffic. Here you see four rules. Rule one that we have here is having the source IP address. So source IP, as you know, is the source of the request, the IP address of the source of the request. So the rule one states that if the source IP is 12.12.41.1 and if the protocol is HTTP, then you can allow it. And rule two and three that you have are denying any source IP that is 32.112.12.1 and 43.11.22.1 having protocol TCP and UDP. So you just deny those requests. And the fourth one is allow for HTTP for 12.122.21.22. So now that you can see here, we have to allow rules and we have to deny rules, but we are not able to visualize it. And you are not able to see, but let us see and let us visualize how it would look in a real time scenario when this is being handled by a firewall and these settings are being configured to a firewall. See here that based on the rules, it either allows or denies the entry of the request from the source IP that was mentioned in the access control list. So if you see the firewall is blocking 32.112.12.1 and 43.11.22.1 and allowing 12.12.41.1 and 12.112 sorry 122.21.22. So these are the two rules. The rule one and rule four are being allowed and rule three and rule two are being blocked. But what happens if we are not using any simple firewall? What if it is a web application firewall? Let's check that out. So the most important thing that you need to remember when it comes to web application firewall is that you need protection for your web application. It might sound stupid, but that's a fact. The web application firewall is a specific form of application firewall that filters, monitors and blocks HTTP traffic to and from a web service. 
So just like we have rules for IP and port and access control list for a web application, it's more granular. As you can see here, we have a good request that is a valid HTTP HTTPS request that is allowed by the firewall and the other invalid cross-site scripting and SQL injection requests are being blocked. And the best thing is you can block any request that you might feel is not good as per the common vulnerability exposure data that you get from the OWASP website. So before moving forward, I just want to reiterate on this once again. A web application firewall is a specific form of application firewall that filters, monitors and blocks HTTP traffic to and from a web service.